Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a Chosen's Corner episode featuring BGE. So it's going to be more of a podcast style, casual discussion, an opportunity to get to know somebody behind the curtain in a different type of video discussion. So let's get into it. All righty, well now I'm joined by uh, BGE here. Uh, what's what's BGE stand for? Bionic Gaming Entertainment? Yeah, you got it, man. Hey, so, there. Uh, <laughs> everybody calls me BGE, but like I think that you know I can stop at like Bionic. That's pretty much kind of like the stage name that I have decided to use. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So just uh, off the bat here, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're from, and 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 what got you into content and raid. Just give us the whole the whole spiel uh, of of kind of the basics here as we get started. Yeah, I'll try to keep it short though. So I'm <laughs> um, basically, good. you know, I've been playing video games for over 20 years now, and I've always enjoyed them quite a bit. I've tried doing content creation maybe two, three years ago, and I kind of failed miserably. So um. I then I started playing mobile games because I got kids, didn't have enough time. So then the raid just showed up on the radar, literally on the phone, sort of like an ad, whatever, on Google Play. Decided to download, give it a shot, and uh, did my first 35 days as free to play. And uh, decided to do a video, and then it kind of worked, right? So it just kept going, kept going with this free to play approach, and uh, got me all the way to here today. So I guess, you know, it, it kind of happened out of the blue in a sense, because I never thought a game like this would allow me to get on the map right so um yeah i mean since then it's been just trying to keep up with uh what it seems to be now like a somewhat job ish still not full time on this might have to go back to work but uh so far i'm enjoying it and i hope that i can continue to do it for uh, a long time cool and and where do you, where are you from sorry i don't know if you're yeah sorry uh so i'm actually from canada if you guys can't tell that already and i am french so i do have you know uh, a funny accent maybe to some of you guys i also butcher a lot of words but uh, hey that's just you know it is what it is so i'm trying to i'm trying to improve uh but like it's still gonna take some time right ah oh, you sound perfectly normal to me no so f is french french is your main language then yeah exactly oh okay cool yeah. uh what what you said you failed miserably like three years ago what were you doing yeah, so like I was playing like uh, back then was like Elder Scrolls Online. I played that game for like two, three years. Pretty solid. It was pretty competitive. Had a lot of fun. I just decided to try and do a couple of videos. But that was after the game had started going. There was a lot of main YouTubers on it. And you just kind of do a video. You post it and you hope that something happens, right? But I never posted on social media. I didn't have anything to back up sort of like my plan to give that a shot. Then I tried a like uh, Facebook game of some kind. I did a couple videos on that. I kind of played as a low spender trying to compete against some wells. That is sort of where I started into this whole approach of like trying to do free to play a low spender. And uh, that also didn't really get anywhere, but I did get a couple of views, never to a point where I got a thousand subscribers, started making money. So then I kind of dropped that for a while and uh, took a break from gaming entirely. I had just gotten my first child, so like that was a lot of work, and you know I had to come and look, focus on that a little bit more. But then eventually, um, this showed up. Like I said, started playing a little bit on the side, and um, kind of worked, right? I, I did post on like Reddit though, that kind of helped quite a bit. Uh, posted on the Discord group, if I'm not mistaken, and then sort of just picked up from there. Okay, cool. And uh, was it your plan the whole time to be free to play, or was that just kind of like your niche that took off? Yeah, that's basically it. It wasn't exactly my plan, although I will say that I'm, I'm not a gambler by nature. Like, I don't necessarily enjoy games where uh, I, you have to put in some money you don't know what you're going to get. I don't mind putting money into games or entertainment when you know what you're buying, right? But um, I feel like Raid sometimes is a little bit too much a gamble. And then since I did the first 35 days as free to play, and that first video kind of worked, then I started continuing down that road, and uh, then I just kept going with it, right? I play like Dragon Champions, and I spend a decent amount of money. I play other games, and I spend there as well, but like, I, I guess sort of like my name was created while being free to play, so I just thought I'd stick with that plan for this game. So you've actually never spent one dollar on Raid? No, no, never. Not a single wow. dollar. And I did like the first 16 months as 100% free to play, uh, then I kind of reached out to Plarium. I was like, guys, if I undertake Faction Wars as 100% free to play, would there be anything special for me at the end? They said, no, we kind of like to keep players sort of like in the same bunch. There's no difference between pay to play, free to play. I'm like, all right, that's not a problem. So then I started taking the perks on my account to make more content. Yeah, the, the content creator program. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Oh, that's very impressive. So what's, do you, like, where's your arena? Like, where do you compete in the arena? 
Uh, gold four. I I've been in platinum before, but like I never finish in platinum because it always resets at like three a.m. for yeah, me, whatever. Yeah. So I I don't have you know that luxury to be able to stay up that late and try to push to finish in platinum. Besides, there's the boosters and whatnot, so I try to just you know what not really play that part of the game. As for tag arena, uh, in gold four right now as well. Uh, but I I always just go back and forth between gold three and four, just so I can farm gold four for the entire week easy battles and then work a little bit harder on the second week for goal three to make it back up uh and then i just you know i'm playing the game of putting in one man defense so that i can get easy gold bars right so i feel like it's not it's not as competitive as i thought the arena would be now that i'm end game and like aside from trying to finish in top 300 for platinum it's just sort of like you know business as usual really and who are your best arena champions that you've gotten without spending any money well I obviously I haven't gotten a whole lot of I'm gonna say some of like the end game void legendaries or game changers. So like the best ones on my account right now is uh the newly acquired Lydia. We have Arbiter and uh Torment. So I'm gonna say those three right now are at the top of my list, and they're probably some of the better ones. Uh, but I also have like Foley, which is one of my better nukers, uh Harvest Jack, which is one of my good crowd control champions as well. Kind of love the guy. And um then we have a couple more Mountain King, which I pulled, he's also pretty good. But aside from that, it's a lot of the fusion champions, right? That's the only sort of guarantee that I have in this game. So as free to play, I kind of just always focus on trying to get those. Cool. So yeah. what's your what's your sentiment? Like, uh, are you planning to? And you said you're not full time content, right? No, not yet. And so you, are you like? Do you see yourself doing raid for a really long time, like until it dies, or are you kind of keeping an ear to the ground on? other things to kind of shift your channel to or kind of what's the plan to that's the thing i mean at first like i didn't know where this was gonna go and i don't think i really had a plan so like last year was like making a video about a week right you guys sort of like started strong you kept going you and Stu, i remember i kept just you know watching your videos it was like one a day pretty early on sort of right but for me it was it was hard because first of all i had the language barrier i was scripting everything so my my videos were so boring, like, because I had to read literally the script and then you couldn't see my face and I was just going through, you know, basic stuff. And I eventually kind of realized that that's just too much work, right? You spend a day, let's say, uh, writing the script. The next day you're trying to put the stuff together. Then you're editing. I had no editing skills whatsoever, like barely any Photoshop skills. So like it was a big learning curve to just get all that working uh, for me. And then by this year, I started trying to do like one a day right being efficient and trying to do the whole thing within a couple of hours uh especially if kids are home when they're napping i have like two hours that's the all all the time that i have got to go make a video prepare the thumbnail uh do the editing post it the whole thing so it just became very um not tedious but like an, an extra couple of hours of work every day and now i've been trying to commit to that one video a day so that's the big goal for now and the last thing i started about what now four months ago was streaming and so that also is taking a lot of my, uh, you know, time at the end of the day when everything is done. When I would like to be relaxing, kids are in bed. Instead, I'm trying to stream a little bit and see if that can help. Maybe I can make it full time with that. Oh, so, I mean, so you make pretty good thumbnails for, for kind of <laughs> teaching yourself Photoshop on the whim. That's you make your own thumbnails, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, every day is trying to learn a little something different. I see something, I try to replicate it or improve it. I play around with things I've done before. Just, you know, overall, I think that in the long run, I'll be a little bit better and more importantly, more efficient at it. So now I have a huge database of all my thumbnails with all the elements in Photoshop. So when I want to do something real quick, you just kind of quickly put it up together. And I think that in the long, long run, sorry, it's going to pay off, right? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do. I still do some of my own, but I do have a have a have a good friend of mine that, that helps me with thumbnails. Um, so, so he'll do. But I did my own thumbnails for like ten years before I ever, nice. before I wow. ever uh, had somebody help me with it. Yeah, so that's cool. And uh, I was gonna say, but the recent ones that you have are are pretty nice. Every time I see them, I'm like, <laughs> man, like I, I'm trying to imagine how they got to put that together and and figure out if I can eventually figure some of those tricks right or whatever. But like yours, I think Cold Brew as well recently has a cool sort of layout with the text I love as well. And uh, that's that's the thing, right? Even Ash, right? Uh, Ash uh, or Clash with Ash, whatever his his raid channel yeah. has some pretty cool stuff as well. So that is something that uh, I I often look at. Yeah, it's been cool because 
Raid is kind of one of those interesting things where it was a niche game and it kind of blew up into something big. So yeah. so you had a lot of like, uh, you know, kind of newbie content creators getting into yeah. it. And then you, we've been able to see them all kind of like grow into like yeah. slowly becoming like good content creators that that are that have kind of everybody's kind of slowly added stuff to their repertoire and slowly gotten better. Yeah. So it's been it's been kind of one of the cool evolutions just because of the the way that raid started out and kind of got popular from basically nothing. It was uh it wasn't one of these hyped up games like uh like like Diablo Immortal or something. It was it was something that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. And uh that's exactly what I was going to say, it's the fact that I look at other games and like all the main YouTubers will jump on those games right away, but I feel like Raid all gave us an opportunity to just put our name right on the board. And that's what I meant by, I never planned on this. I just showed up on my phone. I did 35 days as free to play without ever checking any information on the thing. Just got to work on trying to make a first video, posted it on Reddit, and then it kind of took off, right? And then I think it's kind of amazing because I never thought that this would be the thing to help me out to, to, to try all this. But uh, here I am. Here we are, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a I mean, because even... At, I've only been playing Raid for 20 months. I mean, it feels like five years, but yeah. But it's just, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy 20 months. And it's, uh, and well, then with how crazy the world became in 2020, one year <laughs> feels like one year feels like five. And then, yeah. uh, have you had any complications or or known anybody that's had to deal with any crap? Or has 2020 been pretty smooth for you? uh actually we we've got it full force man like we um we had to have our kids removed from uh daycare for a while and then we got hit by it in uh what was it october spent the entire month at home in quarantine because we all had it so like we got it i think pretty easy we we didn't have any serious uh symptoms aside from for myself loss of smell maybe ex like being tired excessively uh but you have kids so you're always tired so like you <laughs> never really know but like um i mean it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be but like i mean, just that slowed me down quite a bit i wasn't able to put in as much effort for the youtube videos i wasn't able to post necessarily as much some days i, w I was actually trying to do like two videos a day because i've gotten so i'm gonna say efficient at it not necessarily really good but like i could kind of like pump out a couple more and then i saw sort of like uh better like better views on my youtube channel i started getting more then i could see some progression i thought man i maybe have a shot at this before i really need to go back to work where i could you know live off of this but unfortunately i'm not still not close enough i i still have to somehow i don't know double my sort of like revenue overall but uh we'll see maybe i can make it happen you, did your did your smell come back yeah so it came back after like recently so i'd say maybe about four weeks kind of four weeks later it sort of came back and uh, aside from that i mean our kids barely had any symptoms we didn't even know to be honest the only way we found out was because my spouse lost her sense of smell first and then she went to get herself tested two days later i lost my sense of smell and then by the time we had the results they said yeah uh you guys are positive or she's positive and they kind of said, well, if she's positive, then you guys are all positive. Therefore, you're going to go through this period of quarantine, just staying at home. We had people bringing us food over because we weren't supposed to go out anywhere. So, like, it was interesting, but, you know, it wasn't, it didn't feel like the end of the world for us. So, I, I imagine that a lot of people have it a lot worse. And I think we're, we're, we're kind of lucky for that. That's so, like, when you say lost, this is just wild to me. Like, you couldn't yeah. smell anything. No, like hundred percent gone, hundred percent gone. Like, I mean, you could try if you were like, you know, excessively trying to smell vinegar or something that, that was like one thing we tried or one of our reference points or like, you know, one that I'm, you know, I'm not kids, right? Kids and, you know, diapers, you, kind of <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. you know, so like, uh, that was also a good reference point. We were like, man, like we're, we literally cannot smell anything. So it didn't do anything. It didn't feel like your nose was on fire or whatever. It really just was that you could not smell anything anymore. And also that affected your sense of, or your taste because you could not taste as much, I guess, because of the, of the lack of smell. So yeah, I mean, aside from that, it felt like just a little cold for a couple of days, but then, you know, the loss of smell lasted for a couple of weeks. 
Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> well, I'm glad it I'm glad it worked out because we were actually we've been I mean we've been trying to do this for like three months now, but yeah. it seems like always something came up and then you were telling me that came up and I was like, Oh yeah, let's just uh let's wait a month yeah. and and revisit this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just glad it's over though. I'm i I'm still glad it's over because now kids are finally back in daycare. They uh every time they have a little symptom though, they have to stay home. And because I'm somewhat this stay at home, uh I'm not going to say stay at home dad, but like I was for a while. So if ever there is something and they need to stay home, it's sort of my job to do that right now. So my spouse can keep going to work. She doesn't have to use her sick days and whatnot. So we're going to try and keep this going for as long as the situation, uh, you know, around the world keeps up. And hopefully by next year, in the next couple of months, everything is somewhat back to normal. But at the rate that it's going, I'm thinking we're going to, this is going to go on for maybe another year. Maybe another two years. Well, there's been know. within the last week. There's been. I mean, and neither one of us are experts uh, with any sort of validity to speak on it. But I've been hearing in the news that supposedly they've got some pretty good results with uh, with the vaccines. Vaccine. Yeah, yeah. So it could be within the next few months we've got some positivity coming out where we can get those to to the most vulnerable and like the the workers. But I yeah. I, I feel weird even talking about it because I'm just a civilian. I'm not qualified to put out content about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, no, I mean, like I said, it, it really looks like you can get really hit hard mm -hmm. by it, or you can kind of just brush it off. Yeah. So who knows, right? It really seems like it's RNG, right? So yeah. Yeah, the worst kind of RNG. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Not then, the um, so you have, I guess we'll we'll transition into raid for a bit, but uh, but thanks for sharing that. That's that's crazy. Yeah, that was sure. interesting to 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 hear about. Um, so you have Lydia now. Do you feel like she's properly designed or? Well, she brings a lot of cool things to the table. I feel she's hard to gear because her kit does a lot of different things, right? Like, um, I I was happy to get her because a we decrease defense and weaken. Something you don't get as free to play unless you get Draco more for Venus. So mm -hmm. very unlikely, right? So then I thought, hey, it's going to be a great upgrade for my dungeon runs. Turns out, no better than my War Maiden or my Stag Knight because the way my gear or my champions are tuned, I don't need that little extra bit of damage from that weakened debuff, right? So uh, then I thought, okay, so maybe that's not going to be her main use for me. So then I thought, Arena. But how do you gear her as a full debuffer for the fear AOE decrease defense and weaken? Or do you go for damage? And I think we all saw Murder Inc.'s video. I thought it was pretty interesting. She can hit really hard. So I kind of went with a hybrid setup where I have enough accuracy for the PvE content, but then I deal somewhat a good amount of damage. I am using her a little bit. Still not convinced I, I built her right for my account. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to have to work on her. As for the way she works, ah. Uh, I really like the counterattack A1, right? If you get some form of crowd control on yourself, I've actually one shot at a couple champions with that, which is kind of interesting, but it's very hard to reach those stats. Uh, so aside from that, I think, you know, she's maybe a little bit, uh, she was hyped, right? We were kind of really hyped about getting her. I even made a video saying she was going to be broken and OP, but turns we out- We all thought she, that. We all thought that. Yeah, she's, she's okay. She, you know, she has an interesting kit, but I haven't, Again, I think people have not figured out the best way to use her necessarily just yet. But I do think her, her main spot will be the arena, right? So that's where she's going to shine the most. Yeah, I did the same thing. I built her as kind of a utility general, uh, you know, a blend of accuracy and damage. And, and yeah, yeah I, I kind of used her the same way. Are you excited about the, uh, the Doom Tower coming in about a month? Yeah, man, I think... I'm excited, number one, because it's new content, but number two, because I finally caught up. I say caught up because I feel like I've always been like, I don't know, 10 steps behind you guys, right? Because it's free to play for first 16 months. Now with these last five months with the content creator perks, that allowed me to power through faction wars, do a little bit more content, grow their YouTube channel a little bit more. But now I feel like everything's done. All my faction war teams are completed. They're all farming on auto stage 20 or stage 21, most of them. And I'm sort of like ready to go. I'm even, you know, in a sense, stocking up resources from the perks. And so hopefully I'll be ready to do a little bit more content on Doom Tower. So I'm kind of excited for that part. And at this point, Raid for me seems a lot more like that, where anything that comes out, I'm just happy if it helps grow the YouTube channel, right? Like the game sometimes maybe feels a little bit like a job, but it's not a bad thing because, you know, that's the business that I've chosen to be in right now. So I am kind of excited. Doom Tower is going to bring a lot of unique stuff to work on, a lot of diversity for builds, 
new sets, the whole thing. We're going to have a lot of things to do. Yeah. And one thing I forgot to ask about earlier that I meant to was I heard you mention like you didn't have a webcam. Um, were you planning on like never being on camera or was there a reason for that? Or like, no, I mean, it, it just, it didn't seem like it was the next thing to do on, on my timeline of like content creation. I saw plenty of other YouTube channels that let's say do not have a camera, right? And they're, they're, they have plenty of subscribers, plenty of views. I really thought my channel at the beginning was going to be an overall sort of like a gameplay channel first impressions you know lazy peon maybe that sounds familiar to you i sort of always admire that channel where he's going to play a, a, a bunch of different games for a little while and then he's going to make a neat video about you know a review of the whole thing and that's sort of i think still what i want to do in the long run i sort of like the idea of living the hype of new games right that's always when they're they're at their most fun and so you get to play with the community, interact with them. And then if you get to be a part of the content creator program, you get to give out a lot of stuff to the guys. So like, I feel like overall for me, the, the growth of, of the YouTube channel is also about the growth of the community around it. And I think that's what I want to probably do in the long, long run. But for now, Raid is driving my YouTube channel and I have to be cautious, I think, with what I present to the viewers or else they get upset sometime, right? They're like, dude, I'm here for the Raid stuff. What is this Genshin Impact stuff? I'm like, yeah, come on, man. I just want to try a different game. They're like disliking. And I'm like, come on, just, you know, we're trying to have some fun here. Like the more stuff or more games I can play, the more stuff I can give away to the viewers, right? Let's just see it that way. Oh, did you try uh, Genshin Impact? I did. I'm still playing it. Like maybe a little bit too much. I'm like Adventure Rank 45, 100% free to play in that game. I decided I want to see if, if it's doable, uh, but that's the type of game like, you know, like Diablo where you can just keep playing forever. Yeah, there's no so energy or anything. Yeah. Well, there is sort of energy. Oh, I haven't to... played it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so like there is an energy system, but there's also a way where you can just keep playing and you're not going to get experience, but you're going to keep like, getting material and gold, right? So there's always something you can do in that game. And I've always been drawn to these somewhat like MMORPGs, although this one is a somewhat single player game. So a little bit different, but like I think that eventually, like maybe that's where I'll tend to go back to, right? Ashes of Creations, Amazon's New World, Diablo 4. Uh, that's where I'm going to shine the most, I think. That's what I really enjoy playing. And because you can play for an unlimited amount of time, right? Yeah. Are, are, are you a Diablo guy? Because that's where that was. Oh, like... yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I did Diablo 1, but I did Diablo 2 for six years. And then Diablo 3 came out. And that was my first taste at making money with video games. I was running that auction house converting gems into the bigger versions i had spreadsheets going for that i love spreadsheets i do them all the time and then hey I my, my, my kind of my kind of guy here exactly man i know you you, you <laughs> do them too and so like i would keep track of the prices of the gems and then what i would do is as soon as it was worth it to buy the smaller versions of them i would just rank them up to the bigger versions and then sell them for a profit right so I started making a good amount of money also buying just random items from the marketplace when or auction house when they were like too cheap, reselling them same day for like twice the price, right? Buy low, sell high. And I mean, I, I, then I, I'm like, oh man, I, I have to figure out a way to just live off of gaming. And so uh, then that ended because they closed the real money auction house. And so it was back to square one, right? So it took a while before I found something else that I could work on. Yeah, Blizzard got sick of other people making money off of their client there was all these yeah. all these botting operations that were selling all this gear and just getting rich just printing money um yeah. and blizzard was like yeah uh, that's the, we, we gotta we gotta put the kibosh on this and so they, yeah. they but like blizzard's my theory was always that the auction house was what blizzard used to fund the real project which was reaper of souls which was the expansion pack because because everybody was kind of on board with agreeing that Diablo 3 was trash. Um, but then Reaper of Souls came out and it was like, okay, this is a game now. Like this is actually yeah. like kind of fun. And but by then so many of the players were turned off because Diablo 3 was yeah. kind of a flop. Um yeah. so a lot of people didn't even really notice that, like, wow, Reaper of Souls is, is actually like the seasons are pretty fun, uh, for at least you know a month or so until it gets uh, stagnant. But everybody's starting from scratch. There's, I mean, it's like Christmas. Uh, the did you play mm -hmm. Seasons? 
Yeah. The first yeah. day, the first day of a new season when you've got all your friends and everybody's starting from scratch and yeah, yeah I'm, I'm off work this weekend. Let's grind. Like, let's get, exactly. it's like, it's like Christmas. It's uh there's nothing like a new season. It'd be like, imagine raid. If it got like reset and everybody started from scratch. Like, can imagine? yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> like, but like, so the, I mean, the seasons are a lot of fun. I like that a lot. They just need to find a way to kind of incorporate that in mobile gaming where like yeah. you've got yeah. maybe like a separate arena or something where I, I don't know how to pull it off, but yeah, there, there's nothing like a fresh Diablo season. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same, same with Diablo too. I kept going back mm -hmm. to new seasons. Right. And then like, you know, at the end, you get kind of bored after a couple of weeks because you reached in, you know everything you got to do, and yeah. it's filled with bots there as well. But like, just live in that hype, and that's what I mean by living the hype of new games. It's like server or new like ladders or whatever, right? Uh, resets, and I, I find that down the road, probably that's where I'll enjoy playing the most. Just a bunch of different games, living the hype, and then maybe sticking with one for a while, moving on, doing a little bit different ones. Like right now, I'm playing like four games right just because i feel like they all have their little something and i want to learn from them i want to learn how to make more content so that's the big plan yeah and and about your 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 webcam story um I, was i kind of the inspiration to uh to getting your your webcam online <laughs> you were yeah you were to kicking the balls or kicking the ass i should say because um, I, I, at first I thought I'm not going to need a cam anytime soon, but then you reached out for the content or the trivia contest. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't even have a webcam. How am I going to set this up? I'm like, okay, I have, I have a laptop, so I'll get that going. And, uh, that sort of helped out the channel a little bit. Right. So that little push and a lot of people were saying, man, you got to show your face. We want to, we want to meet you. And I'm like, okay, if you guys really want to, I don't mind. So I decided to finally get that webcam. I was also a little bit picky. Like I told you, I wanted to get a, a somewhat decent one. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it just started going from there. I think the cam was never sort of like the the thing or like an issue. It's not something that I did not want to do. It's just I wasn't planning on doing it right, right way. But like your your contest kind of made it happen, man. So thanks to you. Well, you got now you guys have this face all the time. That's right. <laughs> no, uh, I, Hades, Hades did the same thing. Uh, he was making content for like three or four months with no webcam and then kind of did a face reveal. Yeah. Yep. So no, and, and, and I had to, uh, I had to make you guys be on cam because <laughs> otherwise, like if you win, like everyone can just say, Oh, he cheated. Yeah, yeah. He was looking up the answers on his phone. Like during the, I mean, and I did make it time sensitive for that reason. Yeah. So that you didn't have 30 seconds to look something up. Um, so, but Kizzle proved, uh, all the holes in my system cause he was cheating the whole time. So <laughs> it was hilarious to watch him. It was so funny. Oh, yeah. I, I, I made the mistake of, uh, of inviting Kizzle to a civilized competition. Uh, so that didn't go well. <laughs> no. Yeah. So it's, I, I, fun, I yeah. And I, I, so are you, how long do you think raid will last? Do you think it has another year, two years, three years? I think there will always be players in raid to be honest the real question will be when will they stop advertising that's when the game i think is going to die when they're going to run out of cash flow coming in to let's say fund their their marketing campaign then at that point i think it's going to start taking a nosedive because mm. you know surprisingly they they're going pretty hard at advertising and that in return is helping us right mm -hmm. um so is it going to have another year, two, or three? I think I think this game will last for another couple of years. I'm going to say three plus. But is it going to be as popular as it is right now? I think they all have their time. It all It's only when something better comes out that is similar, maybe better graphics, who knows, a better system, it, it's going to take a nosedive, right? And I think that um, that time is not right right now. I think we're still good, right? A lot of the games that are coming out, they don't seem to compete on the level of raid for graphics and it seems that a lot of people are are sticking to that they're saying you know dragon champions it doesn't look as good as raid yeah but it's a different type it's like comparing diablo 3 and warcraft or world of warcraft right it's two different styles entirely but like apparently people don't like it as much so i don't know what about you what do you think do you think it's gonna last a long time or yeah we're seeing a shift from customer acquisition to customer retention i think uh in the last th three months or so we've seen a ramp up in releasing things uh 
Lydia, the Forge, the Doom Tower. We're, yeah. we're seeing a little bit of a ramp up in in trying to flesh out the game to keep people interested. Um, I know I told them personally when I met with them that one of the biggest things they need to address is the dupe system. That like uh, mm -hmm. they we need some sort of way to convert dupes into something that isn't like heartbreaking. Um, because like you have people spending money and then they pull nothing but uh duplicates and they're and they're like, well, screw this, I'm not gonna spend money anymore, I'm gonna quit or whatever. So yeah, yeah. they need to address the duplicate system like ASAP. Uh they need to get mm -hmm. the Doom Tower right to to yeah. create a new mechanic in the game for the community to dive into and explore together. Uh that's sore they needed. That hasn't really happened since Faction Wars, and that was like 10 months ago or maybe even longer. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's time to work on the dupe system. Um, they they addressed PvP. PvP was like impossible. Everybody was in like bronze three. Um yeah. so they, they addressed that and now I think it's time to kind of uh work on the dupe system. How about you? What do you think? Yeah, I I mean that is one thing, but like I I don't have that issue, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. plenty of vault space and I don't have the dupes, so like but I can totally understand how frustrating that must be for, for you guys and all but, the other but how many how like many people. legendaries do you have? uh good question how many legendaries do like I just have? estimate I don't you don't have to tell me 20 ish maybe roughly but, but like imagine you you do a summoning session you pull two legendaries yeah. and it's just two dupes exactly. and you're like and you're like <laughs> well i do have that story for you and uh, <laughs> you know i've been playing for 21 months now or going on 21 months and i've pulled one void legendary uh, in that time which was a solus recently pulled a second one which was a Vizix. And then I got the free ones. So like, you know, it hurts as well, man. I, yeah. I can I can totally feel that or understand that for the other players. So like dupe system is really important. I think also for me, like when I started playing this game, it was about sort of trying to show that, hey, even free to play players, we can compete, right? And um, being able to go in the arena and saying, hey, I beat these players, which clearly looks like they put in some money. That is always a little something extra that I, I like sort of like, you know, using to my advantage in a sense. But um, the boosting in the arena, that is another one that I, I yeah. find they really need to address that because the people that are competitive in this game that have put a whole lot of money, they're being cheated out of being able to finish at a higher tier or, or placement. I think that's frustrating. And I, I find that they've let that go for way too long. So hopefully they fix that as well very soon. Yeah, and I, I, that segues me into something else that I think the game needs if it's going to have staying power, and that is, like, a live PvP scene. Like, yeah. um, like let's do a show match, uh, BGE versus Chosen, and, like, best of seven, and, you know, these are, the, these are the requirements. You can only use these champions or these type of champions. And then we, we yeah. sit here and we fight live, you know, and we're sitting here using our champions, and they need to find a way to imp I don't know if they can... But some sort of live PvP because, like, right now you can't have a show match. Like, we can't, yeah. we can't get Manable versus Murder Inc. and like duke it out and like watch it for fun. Like, the yeah. game needs something True. like that, like like a way for players to have a competitive scene, like live, yeah. so we can have matches or, or something fun in the community. That I think that kind of hurts not having that as well. Yeah, I agree for sure. The spicy wing challenge was a somewhat step in the right direction mm -hmm. but like you know minus the spicy stuff uh, <laughs> i'm not a fan of it but like it was still pretty fun to do that whole thing right it, it was very entertaining to do at first i wasn't very attempted to do it but hey it was it was all fun so like if they can keep doing stuff like this i think a lot of people love that they just number one loved watching people suffer on camera <laughs> but like number two it was it was great right it was a great way to sort of like you know, put even more RNG in the game already. And, you know, you all know how that went. I kind of got lucky on that first round. So I, I'm, I'm ready for more stuff like that. So Plarium, definitely bring it on. Do something like you said, a live PvP scene. That would be amazing. Yeah, and 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 clan wars, and I mean, there's there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, I think yeah. I think the game does have another two or three years as long as they're dedicated. I mean, they have to have the resources. Like the game yeah. has been successful. I'm sure they've they've got the power to to make new content happen. So sure. hopefully hopefully that comes down the pike. But but no, I won't. Uh, I know it's getting kind of late, so I won't take too much of your time. We we it's uh it's been a lot of fun though. Uh, is there yeah, anything man. anything that we didn't touch on that you wanna? That we, no, I mean, hey, this was, you know, like you said, something we've been wanting to do yeah. for a while. So hopefully your viewers are going to enjoy this to <laughs> some extent, right? Getting to know me a little bit more and uh, knowing that, uh, like I said, you were you were the guy to force me to get this camera. So now here <laughs> we are and uh, we're all growing. So hopefully we can 
uh, keep growing with the game and uh, keep collaborating, whatever. So I'm happy to have been on your YouTube channel. But um, aside from that, man, I mean, keep it up. I mean, you're you're an inspiration. Uh, Hell Hades as well. You guys have been doing fantastic. So uh, it's fun to watch you guys go. Oh, well, hey, thanks, man. And what's and what's in store for you? Let let, let people know where they can find you and, and kind of what's in store for your content kind of coming up in the next couple months. Sure. So for now, I mean, we're, we're going to stick to Raid. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere with Raid. Uh, I'm going to keep working on those spreadsheets for you guys, trying to bring you some valuable information. Hey, stop cutting into my market, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you we should just combine spreadsheet power and do something crazy. But like, um, I mean, it's just, again, it's to sort of show a different view on the game, such as being free to play, but now free to play with perks, right? I keep saying it. Actually, I've started calling myself a free to play well if that makes any sense for you guys, but it's just because at some point those perks do add up to a whole lot when compared to a free to play player. A well getting those perks, it doesn't exactly you know amount to a whole lot, but for me, anyway, all that being said, yeah, keep making some content on Raid. We're gonna keep trying other games on the channel, guys. I'm sorry, that is gonna happen, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm trying to grow here, okay? So at some point I have to, I have to pay the bills. I have to feed the kids. So we're just gonna keep trying some stuff. So. Uh, next couple of months is just going to be, you know, a uh, business as usual and hopefully more uh, contests and, and exciting things we're going to do. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, yeah, it's been fun, man. Thanks for taking the time to, to chat with me. We finally uh, got to sit down and have yeah. an in-depth conversation. So, so yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate you stopping right. by. Cool, man. Well, thank you. You bet. We'll see ya. Okay. Ciao now. All righty, that's going to do it for this one. And again, huge shout out to BGE for joining me. I had a lot of fun uh, talking with him, and we've been meaning to do this for a while. So it was fun to finally get to sit down and uh, and have this chat with him. So I will link to his stuff down below in a pinned comment so it's nice and easy to find. Definitely go check out his channel. Uh, he makes a lot of good content about not only Raid, but other games as well. So uh, yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.